Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Daniel Barth and this is Astronomy for Educators. Today we're going to show you how to make inexpensive planetary models for any number of labs and exploration activities. Now if you've taken a look at scientific catalogs uh, for planetary models or solar system models or perhaps one of these mobile solar systems with the planets on wires that revolve around a little sun in the middle, they are hideously expensive, hundreds, even thousands of dollars. We're going to show you today how to make planetary models for less than 50 cents a piece. They're perfectly accurate, perfectly functional, and they give your students a creative outlet. They make steam out of STEM, putting the art component in there. So I have tennis balls today. Uh, I buy my balls in boxes of 36 for about $10. That makes them about 36 cents a piece. If you're buying in larger lots, you can get them for less than a quarter. Uh, I've also got today my markers, some wide masking tape, some construction adhesive, and black paint. Um, I've also got some Gatorade bottle caps. Any sort of bottle caps or poker chips work. Um, one example, one advantage of using poker chips for your models is that you can glue a little magnet on the underneath, which means you can stick these models up on a whiteboard, which is awfully nice. Now, what we're looking at here, we're going to take uh, our tape. The first thing we're going to do, and I'm hoping that I can show you this nicely. Uh, I've cheated here. I've pre-cut my pieces of masking tape. These are 40 millimeter ping pong balls. So we've cut our tape about 125 uh, millimeters long, 12 and a half centimeters, because of course the circumference of a circle is pi times D. I'm going to go ahead and put my tape on the ball. Usually you can find a very nice little uh, equatorial seam on many ping pong balls and that serves as a guideline and I'm taping this around here and kind of pinching it together and now you see I have one half of the ball exposed on a little uh, stand made out of tape really so it can stand up right on a table. You'll also notice that I've set it up so that the logo is revealed. It's exposed here. Now, the reason I've done that is this side is going to be painted black, uh, flat black for the nighttime side. The other side is white. That's where we're going to be drawing our illustrations for our planet. But we're going to take this and we're going to take some spray paint and you may have younger students where you're like, well, I don't want them to mess with spray paint. That's okay. Uh, you can take, and this is a handy thing to do <laughs> with a TV tray in front of the television while you're watching something mindless. And you can go ahead and tape up a whole bunch of ping pong balls, say, uh, depends on how many children you have. If you have 20 children in your classroom for an earth moon model set, you'll want 40 ping pong balls. Older students can help you tape these up and then you can take them home and tape paint them yourself it's really easy to do if you have an empty copy paper box you can put 20 or 25 even more of these ping pong balls in the bottom of the copy box and then go out to your garage or somewhere outdoors and spray the paint into the box uh, several light coats works better than a heavy coat just saying and when you paint the back of these uh, Black, flat, black spray paint uh, dries very quickly, 10 or 15 minutes, and you can give it a couple of coats and then voila, you have a whole set of half black, half white ping pong balls for your students to work with. Now, once we've got our ping pong ball painted here, let's take a look at the process for creating your planet. Now. I will tell you one of the wonderful things about doing STEAM education is every once in a while you get students who will just absolutely wow you with amazing photorealistic models. Uh, here's one that has North and South America, the Rockies and the Andes are in there. Uh, and this one even has little storms put on with uh, whiteout basically. This one uh, an exchange student did for me. This one has Australia and uh, Indonesia and uh, China and the Japans. 
Uh, here's a quite accurate model of the moon with the Maria in the correct places, etc., etc. You don't have to have super realistic models like this. Uh, here's one of Mars. It's very nice. It shows uh, canyons and desert areas. You don't have to have something super realistic. Here's a couple of models that were done by uh, sixth graders uh, who came and I did a, a day for them. And here's a couple of models and you're looking and you're going, well, this is not photorealistic. This is not uh, super accurate. This is nice and it's interesting and it's colorful. Um, these work just fine. These work just fine. As long as one half is dark, representing the nighttime side, one half is colorful and shows continents and oceans and whatever shows the nighttime, the daytime side, these models will work just fine. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to take my black marker and I'm going to uh, outline, here's a section of North Polar area that will be left light and let's make a larger South Pole on this particular planet and I'm going to put a nice peninsula on there. There you go. There's my South Pole, North Pole. That's just fine. Now we can go ahead and outline some continents. Here's one coming out from behind the darkness and I'm going to make a very long peninsula. There we go. We've got one here. Let's make a southerly continent uh, like so and let's put a couple of northern continents up here and perhaps a large eastern landmass coming over there. Um, again, nothing terribly complex. Uh, some of our continents, particularly in the north, uh, let's color them green, lots of vegetation, uh, forest perhaps, agricultural land, who knows. Uh, let's go ahead and have a green area here and perhaps some more in the south. And uh, again, let's go ahead and have an area along the coast is green, but we'll leave an interior area here. Here we're just going to show green near the coastline. Uh, and now let's go ahead and switch and let's have some Let's have some desert regions. We're going to color them orange. You can use orange or brown, whatever. Uh, and uh, here we go. You can tell that I am no great artistic talent. <laughs> uh, but this is quick and simple. Now, if you have students working on these, uh, one lovely bit you can do is you can ask students, OK, go ahead. It's your world. What's it called? Uh, what's the name of this planet? What are the name of the continents? What kind of people or animals or plants are found there? You can get all sorts of creative materials going here. I'm going to use a blue marker and let's go ahead and make some blue oceans. And uh, again, I'm not going to take a great deal of time with this, trying to make a, uh, a short and informative video, but I'm going ahead and I'm coloring in oceanic areas here and uh, you can see that I'm just going ahead and doing this. I've had students do lighter blue near the coast for continental shelf and darker blue for the pelagic zones out in the area here and so you can see we're getting a very nice type of world. Now once we've got this world made uh, <clears throat> Let's go ahead and finish this up quickly. It just seems wrong not to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly fill in my ocean areas around my continents. There we are. Uh, again, what's really lovely is you get students in who are working on these sorts of things and you will see care and engagement and uh, students will go, wow, I'm, I'm making a whole world and it's important and it's fun. And because these are only about 50 cents a piece, students can make them and take them home. You don't have to say, don't touch that. It's expensive. You have no idea how much money the school spent on that. So there we go. I've got a nice planet with 
a couple of continents with greenery and some with brown areas and we have polar caps, whatever. All we do now to finish our model is we're going to use a dab of construction adhesive. I'm using a, uh, a brand called Liquid Nails here. Just for the record, um, ping pong ball material, some of the slipperiest stuff made by human beings. Super glue doesn't work very well. Hot glue doesn't work very well. Uh, Elmer's doesn't work very well. Uh, I've tried um, silicone adhesive, like silicone caulk, which works quite well, but it takes a long time to dry. Um, this gives me kind of an advantage of quick drying and good strength. I'm going to go ahead and put a blob of construction adhesive here. The only thing I'm going to tell you, we're going to put one south pole down, north pole up, and we're going to make sure that we have this arranged so that the model is centered. And I'm going to check here. I want to make sure that the terminator, that is the line between light and darkness, is vertical. So here I have essentially a finished planetary model. Now you can make a mate to this so that, oh, I have a planet, now I have a moon. If they're both on similar types of bottle caps, then they'll be at the same height off the table. And that will work very well. These models, like I said, these can produ be produced in a class period or two by your students. Each student can make their own and eventually keep their own. We can do an entire series of activities with these. Uh, exploring lunar phases. We can actually prove that the solar system, we can make a model of Venus, which is just half black, half white, no marking, it's all clouds, it doesn't show any markings. And we can use a model of Earth, Venus, and the Sun, and in fact prove that the solar system must be sun-centered. You can do all sorts of explorations, and we'll take those up in another video soon. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm going to put a link for the Astronomy for Educators text in the comments section. If you haven't done so, please download your free copy. This has uh, these activities and many more, along with standards, hints on pedagogy, questions with answers, follow-up activities for gifted students and students who want to know more. It also has activities that you can do outdoors, students with their parents at night at home that tag along with the activities you're doing in your classroom. Highly engaging for both hands and minds, this has been Astronomy for Educators, and thank you for watching.